Okay, we're going to now take that final step. Your beautiful video is finished and now you're ready to put up on the web for YouTube or Vimeo or on a website and you want to know how to prepare it for that. Okay, so we'll just go over a, a couple of things here that we're going to talk about in the next few minutes. First of all, output your final master in the best quality that you can and then back up that file. So if you've shot at full 1080p uh, EX cam, whatever format you're using, make a master that's the same quality as your source material. Keep that on file. So now you have one file that you can go to rather than your edit uh, to uh, create something for an iPhone or Android phone or something a little better for the web or something great to put on a DVD and hand to someone or uh, something like that. Um, you'll hear a lot about uh, uh, formats, compression formats that we'll talk about in a minute here. Uh, the preferred format is MP4, also known as H.264. Um, that can look different because it can be a .mlv file, it can be a .mp4 file. We'll talk about that. It gets confusing, but that's the best way to uh, go to the web. Um, if you have the option of changing aspect ratio, if that's uh, something you'll see in a dialog box, just make sure you keep the aspect ratio the same as your source material, probably 16 by 9. Uh, otherwise, your stuff will look squished or stretched out or basically messed up when you look at it on uh, YouTube. Uh, we're going to talk about the difference between the compression type and the file type. Uh, compression type, or codec, is the method that's used to take your file and make it smaller for the web. File type is what you would call the wrapper. Um, you can have, as I mentioned earlier, different file types with the same compression type. And it, the file type has more to do with what's, what uh, piece of hardware is going to play back your video. Talk a little bit about the difference between frame rate and data rate, just because they're completely different things. They sound similar. If you're not familiar, it can be kind of confusing. Okay, so frame rate is how many frames per second your video was shot at. Probably 29.97 or 30. Uh, 29.97 for arcane reasons was something that was developed in order to keep video uh, compatible with old black and white broadcasts. And since now that's gone and We've moved from analog to digital. It's not a factor anymore, so we think in terms of 30 frames per second. Data rate is basically how fast you're allowing the data to go through the pipe to make your pictures happen. Um, and some devices or some internet connections have lower data rates, and so you want to compress it in such a way that your file can get through that pipe. A higher data rate is better quality. Uh, audio fo formats, we'll talk a little bit about that, codecs, data rates, and sample rates. Um, so first of all, resolution. Uh, you can take a look at this chart here and see the difference between 480p standard NTSC resolution in the lower left corner up to 1920 by 1080 uh, uh, HD TV, which, you know, most camcorders are actually shooting at, including many phone cameras. And uh, that basically has to do with the lines. The 1920 is the number of dots from left to right and 1080 is the number of lines from top to bottom. Okay, now this is a piece of software called MPEG Stream Clip and this is a typical piece of software you might find to convert your file. It looks pretty daunting. There are many many things in there that uh, maybe you don't need, you don't want to know about or don't need to know about, but I'll just go over a couple of things and uh, first of all, Kodak, you select the type of compression. You'll notice at the top it's selected to H.264. That's great. Uh, you'll notice that in this particular piece of software there's a button right there that says iTunes. So if it's a piece of audio, you just hit that button. It'll just easily make it ready for you to go. Uh, frame rate, we talked briefly about that. Leave it at, uh, if, if you have the option, just leave it at the uh, rate of your source video, which again is probably 30 frames per second. Um, there are other popular formats. 25 frames per second would be PAL for European distribution. 24 frames per second uh, is often used to provide, I guess you could say, somewhat of a cinematic look that's comparable to what uh, is the frame rate of film in a theatrical release. <coughs> Excuse me. Data rate uh, has to do, as I mentioned earlier, with the size of the pipe. It's that quality slider near the top of the frame. Your data rate's lower if you slide it to the left, it's higher if you slide it to the right. Your video will look better at a higher data rate, but it'll be bigger and may have a tough time getting through the pipe. So you want to figure out the right place to set that. 
Generally, if you have fairly fast internet connection and some patience, and you're uploading to Vimeo or YouTube, set it for high qual highest quality. Their software will take its time to get it there, and it'll convert it at their end and optimize it for, uh, for play. Uh, then, finally, audio settings. Just use AAC, which is a compression that is also known as a lossless compression type. It doesn't really lose much data. It sounds quite good. It makes the audio file pretty small. PCM is uncompressed. It's unnecessarily large, but that's master quality. That would be comparable to a compact disc, for instance. Now, unfortunately, because of all the different places your video might have to go, Apple TV, iPad, Android devices, um, the web, you will see that uh, it can be pretty complex. But as it's gotten more complex, much of the software has gotten much simpler. And here I'm showing you an inexpensive little program called Smart Converter Pro. You simply drag the files you want into the window and select the device it goes to, and then hit the Convert button. It really couldn't be any simpler than that. That's the direction that things are going as the software gets better and better, and that's what I would suggest. Um, Vimeo, YouTube are really good at taking any quality H.264 video, which is highly recommended, and turns it into what it needs to look best on the web. So let the software handle all the complex stuff. And that's really it, I think. If you have any more questions about this, you can reach me at vince.werner at clatteredin.com. But there's probably better resources on the web if you Google them. Okay, thank you.